gentlemen and welcome to yet another edition of hello pastor on focus on liberia my name is dennis jar and we are broadcasting from atlanta georgia in tonight's edition of hello pastor we're going to be looking at christian in business and exceptional customer service exceptional customer service that is what does a christian business look like what are some of the characteristics and what is exceptional customer service as always, your presenter is Reverend Dr. Chandler G. Freeman. Pastor, hello. Brother Dennis, happy Sunday. Hello to you in Atlanta. Hello, Pastor. We are always, always a pleasure to have you. I know I was away last week and uh, or the last time, and uh, good to be back. Definitely. Welcome back, Brother Dennis. Welcome back. My, my deepest sympathies to you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. We want to welcome all our viewers from across the globe. Hello, Pastor, is where we discuss some of the thought provoking questions in our community, in our world. What are some of the questions that are on our mind when it comes to Christianity? What are some of the things? Some of those questions have never been answered. Some of the questions have never been asked in the first place. Some are being asked, but the answer I have sometimes nuanced or not addressed at all. That's why we take this time to address some of these questions. So today is about exceptional customer service. But Pastor, there are a lot of things happening in our community. And uh, by your, you know, I hope we have time uh, someday and you for us to discuss them, right? A lot of things happening in our community and what's happening is uh, a voice such as Hello Pastor is missing. And so we are going to alternative sources, alternative places to hear and get counsel. And some of those places, Pastor, I can assure you, that's garbage. So some of the things that are happening in our community, we, well, and the questions are being asked, we want to be able to address them. The last time I told you about Wisa, who had a, a running with the law, now Wisa went and pleaded guilty we said plead guilty to the charges and the sentencing is uh, later in November. We also have another brother gospel artist who fell into something that, uh, and the videos are all over the place. And then we have another brother who story came up in the news that he's been uh, charged and found guilty for sexual assault of a minor. All these things happening in our community and uh, we are not getting the right kind of counsel. 
and people are reacting all kinds yeah. of ways. So what you make of that, Pastor, first of all, you know, so that we can have time to a whole show to talk about it. Yes. So it sounds to me, Brother Dennis, that we have, we will always have ongoing matters in the community. Yeah. However, Hello Pastor, the next Hello Pastor, not so not this show, but the next show, week after next, we will address these three uh pertinent community matters. What the 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 what what happens to we say? Uh the case of the gospel artist, and finally the case of the brother uh who was involved in sexual assault for us to be able to give it our full attention brother dennis what we can do is our next hello pastor it will be titled Pre addressing pertinent community matters and then we'll be able to delve in it to hear what god has to say on the matter thank you thank you that will be good i have i have gotten a uh, calls after calls say pastor got to address this in fact, yes. one of your listeners threatened say I will go on there and make noise because one <laughs> of the pastor is that one of the pastor congregation has fallen and you can play a blind eye to it. Oh no, no. We are not, we are not, we 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 have something to say. We have the word of God. And so we are not trying to avoid, we never, we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. We would never. Uh, avoid speaking when we need to speak. So uh, we're going to take our next show and address this. Uh, we will definitely do that. Th thank you. Again, if you just join us, uh, this is Hello Pastor. This is where we discuss issue about Christianity, the Bible, living as a Christian. There are some questions, a lot of questions that we have and we have some today and this today today is about a session of customer service but the customer service most of the time in business pastor i want us to start from the very basis okay should christian, should christian be involved in business at all yes so brother, that that's business, a good somebody, question somebody croaking somebody uh -oh, uh, what how does a christian business look like okay brother Dennis, i like the fact that you asked that particular question but that particular question, Brother Dennis, is, is a basic, is such a basic question. Because, Brother Dennis, uh, 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 if I can refresh your memory and the memory of our audience, God says six days you shall labor and do all your work. And so, Brother Dennis, that is business. That is, uh, from, from, from the beginning, in Genesis chapter 2 said, God didn't send rain because there was no man to cultivate the garden. And so taking care of the garden in Genesis chapter 2 was conducting business. We as Christians can be involved in business. But well, Brother Dennis, this is what I like to do now. Let me know on something for you quickly, Brother Dennis. Okay. I want you to pay attention to this because it is important that I nuance something. This is the question, Brother Dennis. This is the fundamental question. What is a Christian business? Okay, so Brother yeah. Dennis, number one, you can go into a store and you hear the people playing. I have been to a car dealership and I have heard the people playing Christian music in the car dealership. I have been to an African store, Brother Dennis, and I've heard the people play gospel music. So this is the question. What makes a business a Christian business? Is it the fact, Brother Dennis, that when I went into the African store, it's a Christian business because they were playing Christian music? Is it a Christian business because the owners of that business are Christian? Is it yeah. a Christian business? Because, Brother Dennis, before I entered the store, I saw Bible verses on the wall. What right. actually, what? Uh, oh, Brother Dennis, I saw the person saying, Jesus is dope. They were wearing a Jesus is dope t-shirt. Yeah. If I wear a Jesus is dope t-shirt, Brother Dennis, does that mean that my business is a Christian business? So the question, Brother Dennis, we are dealing with how in Hello Pastor today is, if, Brother Dennis, I sell you a product, and in yeah. that product, 
the paper that we use to wrap that product, you mm -hmm. see Bible verses in it. Does that make a business a Christian business? All because, Brother Dennis, you came to my business and I was playing Christian music, contemporary Christian music. So this yeah. is the question. Or is it the convictions of the management that makes a business Christian? All right. Brother Dennis, what makes a business Christian is number one. You have to be honest and upstanding in every transaction. That's number one. If you are doing a transaction with me, okay. So I came into your store, brother Dennis, and you were and you were uh, playing gospel Christian music, but mm -hmm. then there was no price on tag on uh, the tomato that you were selling me. And mm -hmm. then uh, when it was time for you to run the transaction for me, your tomato is three times the price of Walmart and family dollar. So what really makes your business Christian is being honest and upstanding in every financial transaction. It's not the fact that you're playing gospel music. Right. It's not the fact that you're wearing the T-shirt, what would Jesus do T-shirt? So providing high quality customer service, being honest and upstanding in every transaction, producing high quality uh, services and goods, uh, how you treat people. Uh, if I come into your store, Brother Dennis, but you don't speak to me with dignity, mm -hmm. how you treat people, how you treat your customers, how you treat the people who work for you. So, Brother Dennis, let's say I came to your store and there was a Bible on the shelf. You're not Christian because you have a Bible on the shelf. You're Christian because, Brother Dennis, I don't know if you remember, when we were growing up, individuals used to sleep with Bibles under the pillow. I don't know if you remember this. I remember Do that. Do you remember that? Yeah. Okay, Brother Dennis, the Bible didn't say that word have I hid under my pillow. The text said that word have I hid in my what? Oh, but, 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 uh, Pastor, but should there be specific lines of business that uh, Christians should do? Like liquor store? Oh. Brother, Dennis, but, Brother Dennis, let me, let me give you, let me give you a quick list quickly. I, I, I love that question. I mm -hmm. always wanted to, uh, uh, Brother Dennis, let me share something with you. Mm -hmm. So, a gentleman told me, and this Gentleman told me during COVID, brother Dennis, when my business was closed, he told me, "You know what? Why are you not selling liquor? Why you don't? <laughs> why you don't own a liquor store <laughs> at a time when my business was closed?" Okay, so these, there are businesses, brother Dennis. I'm gonna list some of them that Christians shouldn't be ever involved in. Number one, stripper club, mm -hmm. brew pop. Casino, gambling house, betting house, uh, cigar lounge, uh, crack business. Christians shouldn't be selling crack cocaine. Uh, internet fraud business. Christians shouldn't be in internet fraud. Uh, having a hotel for sex workers. So let's say you create a hotel in Africa. And you say, all oh, the girls there in Africa, they're so beautiful. So you, it's a hotel. And you know the girls then come in there to do sex work. We shouldn't have a hotel for sex work. Adult toy shop. Christians shouldn't be involved in that business. Uh, illegal arms business. Brother Dennis, war shouldn't be our business. Mm -hmm. You see what how is uh, it affected Liberia in the right. sub-region. War, so illegal arms business. War shouldn't be our business. Pornography business. We shouldn't invest in pornography business. Uh, uh, human trafficking. Telling yeah. girls in Liberia that if they go to a certain country, they're going to be, their life will get better. Marketing agency, but we actually mm -hmm. getting them involved in sales and uh, yeah. human trafficking. So we shouldn't be in that yeah. business. Uh, cannabis business. Christians uh, shouldn't be... Uh, Selling cannabis, even even if for health reason. Uh, let's 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 say so, so, brother Dennis, this is the interesting thing, right? Uh, 
the it's not really what you really have here is really really not for help because there are health alternatives hmm. if something volatilic is having an impact on the brain if something going to take away you know i did a paper i actually did a write-up on how cannabis can even affect uh, the brain it can actually lead to mental illness over a period of time the use of it using it over a, a, a period but but the thing, is, the thing also take away your motivation hmm. so if a person is supposed to be driven using weed over a period of time but the is, there are even countries in the world where because a lot of the population use weed uh, it, 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 it stopped the people in that country from really being hard working people you know, because of the, it takes away motivation. It takes okay. away the drive and everything. So I just give you a list, brother Dennis. Of right. and, and so, so I, I get I get a point. But what's about, should Christian business make profit or how much profit, right? What should be the profit margin? Let's say I, I'm selling something, right? Mm -hmm. and, and they gave me a range from the government that, hey, if this what you're selling, you have from ten dollars or this percent, you know, this gap for you to make the, for you to sell it, right? Even though you're mm -hmm. buying the gas, uh, ten dollars, mm -hmm. you can sell it up to twenty dollars. How should Christian make profit in business? Well, brother Dennis, the, the whole idea of business is to profit. Yeah, but, brother but Dennis, not, remember not, now, not to make profit at the disadvantage of poor people. Okay, brother, brother Dennis, I don't know if you remember the Matthew chapter 25 passage. They said that the master, he gave talents right. to three servants, right? right? Listen to the text with me. So the first person, brother Dennis, but notice what the text said, each according to his business, his ability. Yeah. One person, the master gave five. One person, the master gave two. One person, the master gave one. But yeah. the first two individuals, Brother Dennis, they, the text said they went and traded. To trade, right. Brother Dennis, is to be involved in business, right? And so the, the brother, Brother Dennis, who had five, he doubled it. He did make a profit. Right. He doubled. That's profit and, making. And, and that's and that's my question, right? Uh -huh. The guy with five, double it. The one with ten, double it. But <laughs> what if they tripled it? Would, would it be wrong? No, brother Dennis, the only thing we're talking about is not exploitation. Hmm. You know what I mean? And where do we draw the line as to how much base profit you can make as a Christian? You do have you know? to determine that personally. Okay. Because only the individual understand the numbers. Only the individual understand when they're exploiting. So the individual, that, that's, a very, that's a prayerful matter. Business, yeah. the, the purpose of business, Brother Dennis, is to make profit. That's why you go into business. You don't go into business to not make money. But at the same time, you have to make sure that uh, you're not exploiting and everything. But that's important. Yeah. Right. The, yes. It's, yeah, it, it, it's, it's very important. How much profit can you make? Because uh, especially capitalist society, demand supply, right? So yes. the, more, the, the more demand you can jack up your price. Yes. Should, what should Christian be aware of when they're doing that? Yeah, but brother Dennis, remember we had even we had the issue here during COVID, where when when we had run out of certain sanitation products, even during yeah, COVID, right. remember the time we ran out of certain things. Yeah, yeah. Tissue. But brother Dennis, even the even that black soap, I don't know if you remember the black soap from Liberia. Even the black soap from Liberia, people carry the price of the black soap. I mean, I couldn't even believe when I was hearing the prices of the black soap during COVID because people thought that when they use the black soap, it would help them. And so people were jacking up. In fact, some people bought things, kept it, and created a problem on the market and everything. So, yes. So uh, uh, there are healthy ways. There are healthy ways. Uh, to make profit, and there are ways that are unhealthy in making profit. We are in business to make profit, so we have to make sure. I am not exploiting. Uh, we have to just make sure that we are aware of that. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. And, and let, let's talk about interest. Interest. You know how much? Because like in Islamic ba banking, right? They don't. They don't do interest, right? So what, what's about interest rate? Uh, uh, no, uh, they, 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 interest they, they, rate. 
know the Bible, you, brother. The Bible, brother Dennis, the Bible doesn't forbid us from making interest. But this is what the Bible says, though, brother Dennis. The Bible gives us a strong warning. The warning that the borrower, notice what the text said, the borrower is a slave to the lender. So the Bible tells us in the particular, the Bible tells us two relationships between two people. The Bible says there are individuals who are lenders, but then there are countries that are lending countries. There are countries that are borrowing countries. There are individuals that are lending individuals, and there are individuals that are borrowing. So the Bible tells us that in the relationship between lending countries and borrowing countries, the borrowing countries will be the slaves. In the relationship between lending people and borrowing people, those who borrow will be. But the Bible gives us a warning, though. But the Bible doesn't forbid interest because when the person lends you, the person comes up with what the interest should be. Well, you can, for example, Brother Dennis, when you go get involved in, like, I encourage tell people, you know, man, look at the payday loan, Brother Dennis. Yeah. That's the reason that that is, you see how high that is how high. Rent a center. <laughs> so you pay uh, 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 an extreme rate because the individual has no other work, no other alternative and everything. So these are, and that some of the reason it makes an individual cannot even give to God because of high interest rate. It's so fascinating right. that we That's find these businesses in certain communities, but they're not in certain communities, right? Yeah. And that's as a question, right? That, that is, it, it, it is, it is, it is definitely. Right. But brother, it is, isn't it fascinating that some countries in the world are lending countries. They always mm -hmm. lending money, but some countries in the world, brother, Dennis, they all were borrowing money. So in, in this relationship between lending and borrowing, brother, Dennis, we want to be put ourselves in the position where we are not the borrowing people, but we are in a relationship. We don't want to be the borrowers in the relationship. We want to move to the other side of the relationship where yeah. we are the uh, the lenders in the relationship. Yes. So you are a Christian have a business. Should you send people to a collection credit bureau because the Bible says forgive, right? Or should you forgive your debtor so that God should you forgive their debt so that God too will forgive your debt? No, well, brother, Dennis, well, the, case, the, the case that you are identifying, uh, you know, there are cases where within the, the, the person has to follow, the business has to follow the state laws. Okay. The individual has to make sure that, uh, yes, the individual might want to forgive, but then there are laws in the state that when people do certain things, that that individual, so that individual cannot say that, Okay, because I want to forgive individuals. I'm not doing what the state requires of me as a business person. Mm -hmm. So you they have to be aware of, you of that. You can write off the debt. Uh -huh. I said you can write off the debt. Okay. But it has to be a decision that that business person wants to make. They have to do it. If they have, it's the choice. And what should be the driver of that decision? The driver of the decision is where the individual realized that they want to give an individual a break. Okay. Where the, the, the business person comes to the point that that individual let me give this individual a clean slate that the individual uh so that the individual can can, can get a second chance and everything. Right. However, the problem with giving individuals break is that did the individual learn from the experience? Brother Dennis, or if and after, and after the after, yeah, yeah, I say, or oh, and will that break down my own business if I if exactly, I, exactly? So, there are two things that the business person has to take into consideration that okay, if I continue collecting, I will get if I, I will get all the money, I will get some more money. But did that individual learn from the experience, or after they have no debt again, will they just get back into debt, brother Dennis? Mm -hmm. I, I'm just fascinated. I may not know the numbers because I'm not so current. But I did hear that there was a certain time, I think Liberia went through a process of trying to get rid of debt, right? Yeah, our debt wave completely clean slate on the Okay, so brother Dennis, I would, okay, if we have learned from the experience, I'm sure we are in debt today, right? 
more than before. Okay, so Brother Tennis, why why did we just in just a short time we have no debt and now we are indebted? So Brother Tennis, during that particular experience, did we actually learn to take you know fiscal responsibility to know how to not get into debt and how to save in everything? that the budget, we have to know how to balance it, we are producing country. So, Brother Tene, sometimes the elimination of the debt and the cancellation of the debt, it doesn't mean that the individual learn from the process. Because, Brother Tene, let me just say, let me give you an example of something, right? You remember mm -hmm. the predecessor so who where he wasted all his father's money? Yeah. When he came home, his brother didn't lose no money because the brother was home, right, brother? Didn't he feed two brothers? Yeah. One brother. stayed home, he didn't lose nothing. One went away, he lost everything. But brother, did he, now that he is home, did he actually learn? Will he do it differently? That is what is so important in the borrowing lending situation. Yes. M my last question on that before we move on is uh, the early church. If we look at the early church, I think they were engaging in business, right? So they did. people will go and sell their land, bring it, and put it at the apostles' feet, right? Mm -hmm. What what happened to that? Oh, brother Dennis, the thing you have a case here in the early church. I think you're talking about Acts chapter five passage, right? What? They were well, selling their position, possession, and sharing it. Yeah, brother Dennis, the early church was a sharing church. But you have Bonnie Boss who was a land owner. So he makes a decision that he was going to sell some of his assets and he was going to give the money so that individuals who had need, because that particular pastor said that all the people who had need, they had all things in common. But Brother Dennis, it's still happening today. Individuals are still uh, 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 giving to the work of the Lord. But the difference is that there was an emphasis on there was an emphasis on meeting the needs of the individuals in the church. And so, Brother Dennis, they cannot, 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 cannot say something that's important. Yeah, sure. We need to have two focus in the church. You need to have an internal focus, and you need to have an external focus. What about me by an internal focus? An internal focus is as a pastor, am I meeting the needs of the people in the church? That's internal. But then external focus is, am I meeting the needs of my community? So, Brother Dennis, we have to balance both. Because, Brother Dennis, suppose you have a, a soup kitchen in the community, but somebody in your church needs a soup. You're giving outside, but you're not giving inside. So you have to balance it. Right. You have to have be internally focused, but at the so in the early church, the early church was making sure that individuals' needs were met, and people who have properties, people who are in business, they were contributing to the early church. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you the, the, the recent statistics that have come up on giving in the church. But Dennis, do you know that even in most churches, a lot of people don't give, it's just a little percent. Mm -hmm. But Dennis, there's just even a little percent of people that pay tithes. You know, so, uh, but it is from the giving in the church that the church is able to meet internal needs and external needs. But there are just few people that really give to the work of God. There are just few people that are cheerful. But I mean, you see the word, the Bible says, God, God loves a cheerful. But, but I mean, some people, are, 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 when they give into the church, they can be complaining. Yeah. But so, they so, did, so, but, but I mean, listen, to, they did come to, to, they did come to Hello Pastor to ask them to pray for them to get the job to. But time to, to give to the work of God they say that they will keep all for themselves. But only yeah. when they run into problems now, they come back. Yeah. How do I, you call I, how do you call that kind of attitude though, towards the work of God? I, I heard a story where this guy was making hundred dollars and he was paid paying ten dollars that he was okay with it. So he went to the pastor, pastor prayed, and he started to make a thousand. 
And the hundred dollar was a uh, hundred dollar tie, right? The ten. Mm -hmm. So he went on, pray again, and then so the more he made, he became reluctant because was, the percentage was getting too much now. So he went back to the pastor. The pastor prayed to, for him to come back from two thousand dollars to back to ten dollars to hundred dollars, so he can pay. <laughs> Brother Dennis, let me let me tell you something. Look at look at the, let's look at the numbers. You give ten percent towards God's work. You live from the ninety percent. You save ten percent, and you live off eighty percent. So ten percent you give into God. Because God is the giver of everything. Because, brother, the next thing about it, when you pray for God, I don't know what your prayers are, but I know what my prayers are. When the thing that I can be asking God for, brother, the is a lot. So giving God 10% is nothing. Because what I want from God, brother, the is it's too much. So you take 10%, you give it to God's work. You save 10%, and then you manage the other 80%. This is how... Or, or, or management should look like. But Brother Dennis, you cannot be mean to the same God, but you want everything from her. You cannot say, I'm not going to show gratitude, but you mm -hmm. want everything. You know what I'm saying? And Brother Dennis, this is the thing though. I don't, I want to say something to you, Brother Dennis, that I found very, very interesting. And you growing up in Liberia, I'm sure, Brother Dennis, have you seen a church in Liberia uh, 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 supporting a church here, brother Dennis, in uh, since you since your whole life, have you yeah. seen a church in Liberia send money here to Texas or to Atlanta to build another church in Atlanta? Have you seen it before? I, I've not even seen a church send money to Guinea before I talk about <laughs> <laughs> okay, brother Dennis. So, this is the, this is the, this is something I want you to think about. Why is it that the churches in America, our whole life, can send money to Liberia? But why is it that Liberia church cannot send money to any other country? Why is that the case? Because we haven't taught our people to give. To build their own work, brother Dennis. Why should Texas church build a church in Liberia? So our whole life we've been seeing this particular paradigm, right? Where others are always building for us because, brother Dennis, we don't even invest in our own. We don't give to our own work. So giving is so important because who's going to give to us, brother Dennis? Yeah. Right? Right. Yes. So we have uh, uh, the last show we did. On focus, we ask individuals to give because focus is doing a good work. Why should people give to focus? Because focus is doing an extremely good work. Now, therefore, Brother Dennis, we have seen that the race is not to the swift. Yeah. So, Brother Dennis, it is important for you to understand as the management of football that we need to build this business steadily. We are not in a race. Steadily, but individuals will have to support focus because of the variety of programs that focus produce. We have to give to our own work, we have to learn to support our own work. But this is a mindset, brother Dennis. This particular growth mindset is a mindset that we have to learn as Liberian. People cannot always be supporting us. And we cannot always be a scattering people. We have to support our own work. Okay, let me get back to customer service. Yeah, before we get to customer service now, people are asking questions. Let me address a few of them. Sure. Uh, uh, I know our brother Ananias and his wife, the issue, they lie about it, but it was not, it was not because they have to bring their money, right? But they lie, they lie about that. Yeah, so brother Dennis, listen now. The issue with Ananias and Sophia is not an issue that they, they lame, they saw the lame brother Dennis and they got the money. But when they came to the church people, they told the church people that all the money they got from the lame, they brought it to the church people. They didn't have to do that, brother Dennis. Whatever percentage we, brother Dennis, Giving to God is a percentage thing, but it's a hard thing. You can decide that I will give God 
incrementally and grow in that particular process. You could say, you know, I would give God for my job. If God bless me with a business, I would give God from that business. If God bless me with a hotel, I would give God from that particular hotel. You growing in your giving to the Lord. And in Mark and Sophia, Brother Dennis, they came to the church a portal and they lied. They say, all oh, the money, Brother Dennis, they got from the land. They brought it. But that was a lie. They didn't have to do that. Right. They were right. just supposed to come to the apostle and say, we took a percentage. We kept a percentage for ourselves. But we decided to give God a certain percentage. The problem with Ananias and Sophia was lying to the Holy Spirit. Because right. they wanted to front in front people. But like this, this particular behavior is what we call fronting. Fronting is to believe, let people believe that you're giving to the work of God when you are not one. Right. And I think the apostle too overreacted. No, brother Jenny, it was in the apostle that overreacted. The apostle didn't do anything. God is at work because God is interested in people fearing Him. But but as a result of that act, it wasn't in the apostle because the apostle the, the, the apostle didn't even know what was happening. They say you didn't lie to us; you lied to the Holy Spirit. So God, in His sovereignty, brother Dennis, decided that. The church must fear him. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and understanding. Brother Dennis, fear of God is the beginning. If individuals fear God, these certain things will not be happening. Uh, all right. So so we're talking about I was in my in our church on the refugee camp in Guinea. So, mm -hmm. asked, so we asked, we're talking about the line of business Christians should do. So yeah, if, uh, you know, if a if a Christian is a sex worker in the church, should that Christian tie on the money? And well, the Christian us, shouldn't even be a sex worker. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, let, let me say, let me say, member of the church is a sex, sex worker. Should mm -hmm. that member tie on the money? And the pastor said, if he tie, we'll take it and eat it, but God will not bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Dennis. They, 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 they can we what they, they, the pastor can advise that person to find a different line of work hmm. other than the sex work because the sex work brother Denny, is so dangerous right but but can you let's say we're talking about you talk about that one of the businesses should be in is like a, a strip club right so that they know i said that the christian should not yeah should not so uh -huh. what, what if so river says what if the christian doesn't own it but it, uh, there's a Christian who works there as a bartender it, it, to support his or her family. Is that acceptable? No, I won't, I won't recommend anybody working as a bartender in that particular environment. I will not recommend it. I will recommend other kinds of jobs, but I won't recommend that particular kind of job. Yeah. So before you be a lot sitting at the city gate and you think you will not get the fact. <laughs> No, I, I don't. because it is easy for us to think that we can handle it until we yeah. realize later on, brother Dennis. Yeah, that's true. That we, we, yeah, so I Evelyn would recommend it, brother Dennis. I would business. recommend it. Evelyn say, and I brought this question up because Pastor Freeman, you are doing business. So should a pastor do business or rely solely on tithes and offerings? The pastor should do business. Let me tell you why the pastor should do business. And let me give this particular Evelyn uh, 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 Paul was a tin maker. Paul, listen, Evelyn, Paul, Priscilla, Aquila, they were all making tents and selling it. That is the reason why Paul could support himself. That if the church, <laughs> Brother Dennis, the people, the church has responsibility. The church has to pay their bills every month. And if people don't pay their tax, you still have to pay that bill. The church has to pay a light bill. If the people don't come to church and they decide to go on vacation, the church light bill is still due. So the church, the pastor has to support his family. So your pastor ought to be involved in business. Because sometimes giving fluctuates. Yeah. So on major holidays in America, people don't even give to the church. The people can be buying clothes. Right. So much time the people can be going on vacation. Certain time, but I didn't look at the giving trends. The giving can be so what? So low. 
Because you think this giving time, because you think giving time, you think the people are giving God to giving offering, right? No, you gotta do it with the turkey. <laughs> so, uh, so brother Dennis, the pastor has to be involved in business. True. To be self-supporting. Hamilton said the overarching purpose of, of for doing business from a Christian perspective is first seen as a way to serve others. Making money or profit is secondary. Every business is a service. So we're not eliminating the service. We're not telling him, we're not telling him that a service is not involved in the process. That's why my show is called exceptional customer service. But at the same time, that particular service has to be supported financially. And this person needs to understand whoever is asking me, Hamilton, this question, nothing is wrong in making money. Something is wrong in making money the wrong way, but nothing is wrong in making money. So healthy notions concerning money. The first thing, Brother Dennis, we have to help individuals to understand is mindset. They say the love of money, they didn't say making money is the root of all evil. Yeah. They, they, yeah. Whatever attitude you have with money, wrong attitude towards money, but not making money in itself. So, in order, we have to start first with healthy mindset concerning money. Because Genesis chapter 2, brother Genesis, they say, the gold that was in one of the rivers in the Garden of Eden, and that time, the currency was, gold was the, the it's currency. They say, mm -hmm. in Genesis chapter 2, they say, the gold that was in the water was good. And so, the person in Hamilton needs to have a healthy mindset. He needs to provide quality service, and he still needs to make a profit, so he can grow the business. So, nothing is wrong in making money. Thank you. That, that's a good segue to our topic for the day, which is exceptional customer service. Yes. What is that? Number one, customer service, Brother Dennis, is the support you provide to the customer of the, or the client before and after. So it's not customer service, it's not just um, the transaction, mm -hmm. right? It's not when I just bring your 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 thing you came to bring at the at the cash register. Customer service is how I treat you before you buy. Customer service is after I treat you when you buy. Customer service is how I treat you after you buy. So so you the support so that we can make the process of transaction easy and enjoyable experience. So customer service, brother Dennis, from the time the individual enter your store, you you. The, how you welcome the individual, that customer service. Even in the church, Brother Dennis, we're supposed to be doing customer service. Brother Dennis, why do you think the Bible said greet one another? And you saw what Paul said, greet one another? With a holy kiss. With a holy kiss. Uh -huh, so, gotta, we got to include, include a kiss. Okay, Brother Dennis, but listen <laughs> now. Now, let me, con let me contextualize because I don't want nobody to go be somebody because they try to kiss somebody's wife or somebody's husband. But in that particular culture, that's how they did the greeting. But in our culture, Brother Dennis, we have to greet contextualization of the yeah. biblical text now. So the way how we greet people, but the whole idea is when people come to church, you welcome people to church. I'm so happy to see you. So the church ought to be very, very warm because of Christian fellowship. What Paul is saying is that the way you know that the church is warm because of our Christian fellowship is to be, when I come to church, but it is, I should feel welcome. Even when I come into your store, if you have an African store, you have a convenience store, I should feel welcome. The greeting of the individual is how welcoming you are to the individual. This is what customer service looks like in public. So, how you treat the person before the buy, how you treat the person when they're buying, how you talk to the person with quiet dignity, and after you treat the person after they buy, that's what customer service entails. So, so if you put Bible verses on the wall, really, that, that isn't it. But, but then, even if you put power verse on the wall, but you're not treating me the, according to the Bible verse. You say you put a Bible verse about kindness, but you're not talking, you're calling your, you know, rash right. No. You can't want, because I, I know a, a, a pastor who was also, you know, he, he had the, the, uh, 
they rock in to whip his kids when they go wrong on the wall. <laughs> and he had a Bible verse on it, I need thee every hour. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes the Bible verses can be misleading. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I like that one. <laughs> so you better be in the rock era. <laughs> and the children were high headed, so <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not saying that I'm not saying that he shouldn't have disciplined his children, but he has to another thing better than it is that you know sometimes growing up, you know, our parenting can be so hardcore, but you got to start to talk to those children. And yeah. every child is different. You know, you gotta build a relationship with the children. But brother than it is, uh, uh it, it wasn't a bad thing for the writing, the writing, the writing can help you to be straight. Hmm. So that was the culture we grew up in. The writing they didn't do us harm because the writing helped us to say, I'm not gonna do it again because I don't want to write it. Because they say fully that is bound in the heart of a child, but the road of discipline, right? That's proverb. But well, I'm not against parents, yeah. you know, beating their children oh, 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 when they're oh, oh, and, and I want us to talk to that to talk about that in a, on a separate show. Sure. The discipline. We'll, we'll, we'll do that. Sure. So, uh, yeah, customer service. You know, we're talking customer service. What, why the is importance, it important? The importance. Yeah. Because it helps you to grow the business and retain customers. So, brother Dennis, the service we provide for people on focus will cause them to be coming every other one. The topics we select, how we answer the custom, the, our 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 people listen us questions. That's all customer service. Yeah, I, I was talking so, to one of my pastors because. Okay, should we really in the church? How do we? display, exemplify, or show this form of exceptional customer service? How would do Brother it? Dennis. Brother Dennis. Brother Dennis. Yeah. There are two, the Bible, the, the, the Bible talk about two kind of nets in, in Luke chapter 5. And it gives us different example of the net. It said, Jesus told the disciples to throw the net and then they caught the fish, right? Right. So there's a net that brings people into the church. Then they, they say that the disciples were mending the nets. They're not throwing net. They say they are mending it. The reason why we mend the net is so better than it. The net cannot break and so people cannot leave. We don't want people coming through the front door and leaving through the back door. So customer service is when people join the church, we get to know them. We put them in small groups. We now have clicks in the church. Everybody feels welcome. Everybody gets to grow in the things of the Lord. That's how exceptional customer service can be done in the church. The ushers greet people. You know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, if you, you don't you don't get mad if somebody baby crying. You know, brother, didn't you, what, what, what you got your child yet crying here for in the church? You can you stop the child from crying? So you have we have to be even kind if somebody child was crying in church. That's all part of customer service. The deacon shouldn't get mad with a woman because her child was crying. So the way how you handle that situation, should children be running up and down in the church? No. But you can talk to the children in a way where, okay, go to children's church because you got plenty of energy. So that's part of, so people not coming through the church door and leaving through the back door. So the reason for good customer service is to retain people and to grow the church. And, Even and with a business. And that requires skills. Very, yes. But where we get that from? We get it from the Bible. Be kind to one another. Love one another. Some of patience is a, is, 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 a, is, a, is, a, is one element. Interest, developing an interest in that person. Brother Dennis, the woman came out of well, right? To get mm -hmm. her water. And Jesus, by her, Jesus saying he developed a, an interest in her. That's that's customer service. She she was shocked that Jesus even talked to her. When somebody comes in your store, Brother Dennis, just the interest you show, how your day going. It's an interest. Mm -hmm. Even when you're talking to somebody, uh, uh, a client on the job. The interest you show in that person, brother, it's a skill. 
These are what we call interpersonal skill. And this is, brother Dennis, this, this is not IQ I'm discussing with you. I'm discussing EQ with you, emotional intelligence. Brother Dennis, you can be cerebral, have a high IQ, have a low EQ. Your emotional intelligence low. We need to have both, right? Let me talk, Brother Dennis, about some good customer service skills, persuasive speaking. Clear communication, self-control, effective listening. If a person, brother Dennis, don't make fuss with the person if the person told you that this is the price that they saw for for the for the for the chocolate milk. Yeah. But if yeah. that's the price on the chocolate milk, brother Dennis, listen to that person and then give the person the price. Okay, you go back next day and change the price. So effective listening, taking responsibility. Those are good parts of it. Can, it's, it's something we learn. You can learn it. Yes. In, in school or where? How? But then if, if you want to run a business, going to a school is just theoretical. You saw it in Liberia. The Lebanese children after high school, they went to owning businesses all over Liberia. Such a tribe in Liberia. And then they become a business tycoon. It's not learning it in school. Is, is getting a mentor, working with a person who's in that business. The best way to learn a business, brother Dennis, if you want to learn how to operate a store, volunteer with a person who has a store. Yeah. You can say, oh, my father didn't have a store, so oh, poor me. But brother Dennis, if you knew of, 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 of a decent person in the community like at that store, go and volunteer some hours there. But don't go and open a store, brother Dennis, just based on theory. You don't even know how to do inventory. You don't even know how to operate the cash register when people come in fast. You don't even know how to know what goods are selling all the time. So the best way to learn a business, brother Dennis, is not by getting classes in the university. It's to be with a person who's running a business. To learn from that person, let that person mentor you. It's the best way to learn from a business. Do we have some of these exceptional customer service examples in the Bible? Yes, we do. Let me give you an example. For example, we have Lydia in the Bible in Acts chapter 16, verse 13. We have an example of Lydia. And then, uh, yes, she provided excellent customer service. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, uh, John chapter 2, excellent customer service. The people say, Brother Dennis, that the wine that you have given to us is better than the first wine. Brother Dennis, they're not eating in customer service when Jesus turned water into wine. Look at what they, look at the review, Brother Dennis, on the wine. They <laughs> yeah. the, 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 Brother Dennis, listen to what they say. Why did you keep the best wine for the what? For the last. <laughs> Brother yeah. Dennis, eh? but if Jesus had not done it, the wedding was going to be a what? A blunder, right? Flop, yeah. Everybody was going to be Brother Dennis talking about those people. We came to their wedding and guess what happened? The liquor All the news they've been making, they went out of work. Yeah. So what Jesus did is not just a miracle. It was also excellent work, service that Jesus provided for those couple. So this is what I'm saying. When the subjects run out, we have to know that Jesus can help us to make our shortage in our life unnoticeable. Because there are some things, brother Dennis, let me teach you this text. There are some shortages, brother Dennis, you don't want people to know that you, 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 there's a shortage that's happening. So people never found out that there was a shortage because Jesus made the shortage an unnoticeable shortage. But he provided excellent customer service. Yes. Wow. Oh. We got we got more questions. They are still going back to uh, <laughs> Evelyn says should Christian give hugs or do handshake as a matter of customer service. Okay, so you can you can greet somebody worse with all hugging them, but you still did a greeting. Oh, it's so good to see you. It's still a greeting, but I'm not saying go hug somebody worse or husband now, so the people can come and beat you in your soul. 
Don't be the store owner who always hawking the people wife and husband so the reputation can go out there. But you can still greet that man and still greet that woman and make that person, brother, brother Dennis, you can make somebody welcome with your kind words and your soft words. Mm -hmm. I can make you welcome by the way I talk to you. So store owners and vendors and, and, and professionals can make somebody welcome. They all will have to do handshake. Doing COVID, brother Dennis, we're not doing handshake, but it didn't mean I was still saying hello to you. So hello, pastor, is, a, is also a way of greeting. Yeah. Yes. Octavio Jun says, should I give 10% to the church from my successful lottery win? <laughs> if you hit the jackpot. I, I, don't, I don't like people who get their money from gambling. Because the gambling, today he may win, Tomorrow he will. That's not a wise way to spend money that God has given to you. I don't encourage people to go win lottery, spend their time. There are better ways to right. invest money. So I don't, I don't, I don't recommend that, brother Dennis. Right. I but don't they recommend win it lottery. already. I, huh? I, I, I said they win it already. They win twenty million. The church will be happy with a ten percent of that. Well, but it, it, they, they must just disclose to that person so that person know how they won the money. Whoever they're giving it to needs to know to how they got the money and then let that person make the decision. Because most of the time, brother Dennis, we don't ask people when they give it to the church where they got their money from, right? Yeah. Not, not so I'm sure I'm sure the money, I'm sure, I'm sure over a time some of the money that have come into the church have been all kind of money. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah one, because one, we really don't ask, how do you get the money? One one pastor will, he preached on that he called it strange fire. I think there was a little <laughs> <laughs> to the money that the fire. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> should, uh, says, Pro, should Christian give bad reviews to businesses that don't give excellent customer service? Or we should uh, not let it slide. No, 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 no. I think that uh, uh you should give a review. And then you give giving review has nothing to do with if the business is Christian or if the business is not Christian. I'm not saying that Christian shouldn't give you. Am I telling you? To, am I saying that you should go into a, a a business bathroom that is not clean because only because the people say the business bathroom should because the Christian no the Christian people should clean the bathroom. The Christian people should give you fresh food if the Christian has a grocery store. Their food is supposed to be fresh. So you give reviews if the person is Christian, the person is not Christian. Because you're giving the review not based on the identity of the individual. You're giving the review based on the service, the products, and how the individual. So River Sales Pro should go ahead, uh, uh, Brother Dennis, and give his review, regardless of the fact that he knows the person. And then guess what's going to happen? If that person gets the review, Brother Dennis, and that person can make the adjustment, that person will be able to grow. Right. And, and, and the way River said, asked the question, uh, they should have give bad review. I think the review should be given out of, you know, honestly, right? Yes. Don't, don't give it because you are angry and you say, yes. you say something and then you are using all the word, but give up, give up feedback, you know, that is honest. Yes. But well, don't give a feedback to hurt it. If, what, if River Sepul is trying to hurt that business, then yeah. I don't recommend it. But River Sepul must also understand that if something happened when he went to a particular business, that he, the River Sepul, is not perfect. So every businessman is not, I've been teaching this lately, it's not a finished product. Nobody is infallible. Every business person is growing and learning and, you know, and everything. So the River Sepul go to that person and tell that person before he gave the review. I came to your store today, and this is why. Don't start giving that person personal feedback, brother Dennis. But don't do a review as a way to harm that person when you really never even pick up the phone and say, man, you know, I came the last time, and the chicken was well, 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 cold. He said, you know, it wasn't the warmer, wasn't working, you know. So I would say if Rizma Sepro knows that it's a Christian business, then he should call the people on the phone, say, look, mm. I came to your store and I was trying to get fresh chicken, but I noticed the chicken had been on the warmer. It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon and the chicken was put on the warmer 7 o'clock in the morning. Right. 
Yes. But yeah, some, some people go to the restaurant and they, and they put hair in their pocket. You know, after they but, finish eating, they finish eating and then they drop the hair and say, oh, come and look at this. But, but the thing that wound the being dishonest, God not going to bless them for that, man. And you can't harm a person's business. You can't eat a person's food and you do that in the end. And then not only that, you put hair in the plate then later on you wrote a bad review. That's being, that individual themselves being dishonest. That's not right. We should stop doing that. Otavio June said, Reverend Freeman, thank you for the insightful exposition. Question, what Bible verse say that Christians are not to engage in certain businesses in the world? Oh, we don't, we don't have a specific Bible verse. We just have the co collective commands of God. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if uh if a verse tell you uh or to respect you know love one another yeah. right so they say we should love one another but you know when you go and human trafficking is not loving one another right right because you are harming somebody so the re the way we come out with the principles and the guidelines is based on the word of God. If God said we should love one another, you go to invitation, brother Dennis, human trafficking, you, you know that's not the exhibition of love. And, and uh, in, in Proverbs, it says false wits as an abomination to the Lord. Yes. So, that's just an example. Proverbs uh, chapter broke, broke Proverbs, Yeah, Proverbs chapter 11, 1 and Proverbs 16. That is an example of not being dishonest in the business, you know? Yeah. Yes. But sometimes yeah. you, want to, you want to get ahead. You know, you know the uh, the cop we mentioned the rice bowl. They go and and, and, and punch it in it. So it doesn't really represent. Well, let me uh, call on our callers. Uh, if you want to join the conversation, we want to put the uh, number is on the screen there. Before that, you can also donate to Focus on Labro so that we can continue what we do here. Uh, but if you want to join the conversation, the number is right there in the ticker. You can call that number. That's 605-313-6004. The code is 791403-POUND. So call that number and be part of the conversation. Yeah. That's 605-313-6004. Code is 791403-POUND. Still on the uh, exceptional customer service, are there examples of bad customer service in the Bible that resulted into the loss of business or customers? Um, yeah. So uh, I talked to you about, uh, like, for example, we've had, uh, we had leaders, Brother Dennis, who didn't understand that their job was to provide customer service to the people who they were serving, right? Yeah. Let me give you an example. That's why effective listening is so important. Real boom. The people told him, they say the taxes that we've been paying during your father time has been so high. But real boom, as a king, you have to understand that leadership is a service. Yeah. Leadership is influence. The people came to the real boom, they said, real boom, the taxes that we pay on, under your father is too high. So instead of real boom, effective listening as a leader, listen to the plight of the people to be able to help the people in the welfare of the people. Brother Dennis, he said he wasn't going to and, and reduce the taxes. He was going to even make it more difficult. Yeah. So that's how Israel divided. That's how you had the separation. That's why you had Judah and how you 10, 10 of the tribe broke away from Rehoboam that particular, I mean, Jeroboam, Rehoboam that particular day. Customer service, Brother Dennis, is your ability to listen to people. In a business you're doing, effective listening. Some people, Brother Dennis, let me tell you something. Liberia would be a wonderful country if the leadership can listen to the opposition and fix it. If the opposition said the rule bad, brother Dennis, and affects the rule, who will be looking good in the end? The leader. The leader. Because the leader then got people around them who are cursing 
the people who are giving the leadership honest feedback. It's not everybody that is opposition. Some people just love the nation. We want good road, brother Dennis. We don't mm -hmm. want to make accident. So if you the leaders have to do, especially in light of the voting that is coming, we want leaders that can listen. And we don't want people around the leader to be fighting us. That's why, Brother Dennis, as a pastor, I don't have any armor bearer. My armor is spiritual armor. Put on the whole armor of God. And I, I got nobody, Brother Dennis, walking with me that holding my Bible. I hold my own Bible. Because a leader has to listen. If we were correcting all the feedback that the leadership gets, the country will be a better country. I agree. Yes. Yes. Well, really. well, we, we don't we don't have any color. We're going to wrap, wrap this up. Let me see if we still have more comments here. Okay. Riverside Pro say, great job, Pastor. Oh, I Riverside like Pro, it. thank you so much right, for, right. for watching. Right. And I want to stress this because uh, most of our shows, you know, people call me, people talk to me and say, oh, Dennis, you're doing a great job. You know, but the reason they are not calling to say it because we are so accustomed to calling and criticize and say the bad stuff. Yes. Come in and say the bad stuff. We are not accustomed to come in and say, oh, thank you. I like it. Yes. So comments like this too, welcome. You can call and say, yeah. today I got saved. Yeah, from, from the preach, that's also good. Yeah, we need we need positive comment. Don't just call me Undo, if you want to complain. Just call me and say, Pastor, thank you for the show. Thank you for providing meaningful content into the public domain. Brother yeah. Dennis, thank you for the work you're doing, the collaboration. Just the fact, brother Dennis, that you myself having a show where you must say that making fuss. It's yeah. a blessing in our community, oh. right? It's a blessing. And, and, and just to add, even as we as we as we do the show, and you see the chemistry, nobody will believe that we have not we have never met in person. That's a, that's, that's a blessing. <laughs> it's a blessing. It's a blessing. Evelyn said, "Should Christian oh. give if pastor is mismanaging the money, the business?" Okay, now I would I, I, I'm going to talk to Evelyn as a pastor. Number one. Everly is not part of the financial committee of the church to know if the church is mismanaging. Everly cannot come to this particular conclusion that mismanaging is going on if she doesn't have all the facts. And Everly cannot come to a conclusion concerning mismanagement if in the church if the, the church if the church giving our report, you have to be ready to know for true, you know. Uh, to be able to first say that mismanagement is happening. So we really have to have the facts. Yeah. And then secondly, uh, uh, my giving, Brother Dennis, I don't give because of the imperfection of the management. I give because of my giving to, there will be no uh, uh, infallible system. My giving, I give to the Lord because I want his blessing in my life. What, what, and, does that, what does that mean, giving to the Lord? What that means, Brother Dennis, is that my giving is to God. So when oh. I give uh, when I give my percentage to the church okay. or whatever charity I decide to give it to, I'm, I'm, even though that charity is getting my money, but my money was given to God's work because I believe in the cause. And so when you talk sometimes with the administrator of this organization, they will give you the breakdown. They will say certain amount is spent here, certain amount is spent on missions and everything. The church will say certain amount is spent on utilities, certain amount is spent on keeping the church doors open. But before we come to saying that mismanagement is going on, we have to make sure. It cannot be based on gossip. And you have to understand how that church is really doing the financial. If you're really not aware, don't come to that conclusion. But is it good to support the work? Yes, it's good to give. Yeah. You know, give to a good work. That's so, why I would, I would suggest Evelyn. Right. But it's also important mm -hmm. that, uh, like, like, for instance, when you are giving, should you, should, are you saying, okay, let me just give and turn my back? 
or no, that's not what I'm saying. Mm. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that the the the, the, the church is was... Listen, tell you what... <laughs> that's okay. The accountability where the church telling you where they're spending the money. Yeah. But find out first now. But don't just see somebody, if the pastor, you see the pastor with new car and you right. think he used the church money when that man is working all night. Right? The pastor, the pastor working all night. Right. His wife working all night. Don't say that your money now. The people working. You can't come to that quick conclusion and say, oh, pastor got a new car because pastor got a new car and pastor in a new suit. You know, that right. it was your money, right? Because if you, if, you, if you went by that, then you think I'm stealing every day. Exactly. <laughs> what about the pastor, brother, didn't find a night job? Yeah. You see? I, I, was, I was in a church where, you know, the pastor couldn't give report. Yeah. So I asked, but pastor, we have now given our monthly report. He said, the people are not paying tax. Then he started calling individual members in the church. I mean, I'm going to give a report to. Okay, okay, no, brother, that? Denise, no, so that, that in that particular case, he was supposed to give a report so you can know what's going on, especially for the fact that, uh, but brother, Denise, another thing is that you do have troublemakers in the church. Some people don't pay tax at all, but they're still asking for a report. But why don't we start with number one report where you start to give first? So this is what I'm saying. As a pastor, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a balanced person, Brother Dennis, in this conversation. Yes, the church should give you a report to tell you know what's going on. But at the same time, Brother Dennis, if you need to pay offering, oh yeah, you should know what's going on in the church finances because you haven't given, right? But you don't know who they be asking for, how the church is running the money. They don't even want they don't, they don't pay. Pastor, we have one caller here. Okay. Call out your name and where you calling from. Mr. Benpo, A.B. Oh, How are you doing? Mr. Abraham Benton. Go ahead, Riverside Pro. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, thank you very much for the show. I really like uh, how pastors uh, demonstrated a lot of uh, this uh, illustration using uh, Bible verses. I mean, Biblical references, but I have two questions. Uh, my question has to do with uh, if Jai, I think uh, maybe with your, your knowledge is uh, with uh, economic too. How do you guys? Because the Bible says that ten percent of your income. Okay, so but it it doesn't specify what kind of job. So what if a man? First of all, do we consider a gambling like somebody who play lottery? Maybe twenty. Maybe the man doesn't have a job, or you know, he plays, and you know, that's like his income. That's how he makes money. I mean, he doesn't win every day, but maybe in a month, maybe he wins. But then he gets ten percent of that of that lottery money because the Bible says income. You know, you don't where it comes from. Right. And, but he gives it to the church. <clears throat> yeah. Is it acceptable? That's my first uh, 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 well, question. My second one. River says, "Bro, you said uh, the Bible says income." Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it 10% of your earning? Does it say 10% or 10%? Yeah, go, go ahead. Your back. Yeah, so back then it could be food. You know, from what I learned in, in church, it could be your, your, it could be the garden you made or, or, or dentist, you know, it could be the corn you plant. 10%, it doesn't necessarily have to be money. So, yeah, 10% of your earning. So, okay. Now, I mean, it's acceptable if a man lives on lottery and that's his earning. Right. He got no job, but he decided to say 10%. And then my second point, I asked that question about the, um, about the, uh, about a review, uh, Dennis, because it happened here right in my community. This one Ghana woman, she's a very nice woman. She got an African soul. But, you know, the African American girl went in there and the lady was already talking to us, the African. So this, this American girl felt that she was being ignored. You know, so she gave that lady a bar rating. And that lady, I'm telling you, she's one of the, the nice Africans, so the one of the got only two in my in my in my place. And that lady cried. She has never gotten a rating before. She goes to tell a nice woman. But only because of this lady thought that the woman you know she was only talking to her African people. You know, like Pastor said, I don't know if she did it to her the business. So Pastor, what do you think? Uh, how I mean, how did that lady approach the issue? Because she was crying. She said she was really? going to go do. I mean, talk to people. So, what do you 
what do you think? I mean, how can that lady as a Christian business owner, how, how, I mean, how can she, I mean, what would be a word of advice or word of counseling to her? Thank you. So, thank you. Thank you. So, so it's important, Brother Dennis, uh, uh, you can hear me right, it's important for people to understand, even River Sepro, it's important for people to understand that when somebody write a review for about your business, it doesn't mean it is final. When somebody write a review, you can write under the review what really happened. Yeah. So it, it's important for us to not think that when somebody write a review, that it is final. Because somebody read a bad review. You have something to say about that particular review. Like yeah. in this case, if she was attending, in that case, she was talking to people, she wasn't ignoring the girl. So she can explain under there. If the girl felt that as African-American, that the woman favored the Africans over the African-Americans, then the lady can write right there that I don't favor it's just that I was attending to them before you got in the store. So they, they yeah. can go under that particular review in Google and give an explanation. She doesn't need to leave it like that. She can go in Google and explain her side. So when people who are reading, they will not just see that bad review. They will also see, and she can just say explanation from the management on this particular case. I was attending to the Africans my store, we welcome everybody. She can make a little statement under there, Brother Dennis. That's the first thing to reverse our pro. Question number one. Question number two has to do with the fact that, but gambling is not a job. And, 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 and gambling, the individual who is gambling, uh, they're really not stable. Because sometimes they, they, they gambling the money thinking that they will win. Right. And that money, and, that and not, gambling, just gambling, uh, that that's not, not just gambling, but any of the other business that we talk about, sex worker and the different kinds of business. Oh, yeah. The core question there is: if you get money from any of those wrong uh, uh, places, should you tie it on that money? What should be the no. response to that? Or should you donate? Well, brother Dennis, the I, 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 I don't want that kind of donations. I personally don't want that kind of donations. I, I, I'm here, brother Dennis, to change lives. Yeah. I'm not interested in the money. I'm interested in that person going to heaven. Right. But What's the profit? And, and then if, what happened, we, we have a caller, but before the caller comes in, let me tell this story. Because there was this, uh, uh, this very rich woman, she died and she left her cat. Right? And so they, they uh, so the, it, it was in your will that mm -hmm. anybody, any church that accepts to have a funeral for the cat when the cat dies, she has a <laughs> amount to give the church. So they went, they went from church to church, look, looking for a church. So the cat died eventually. They went from one church to the other, looking for a church to have a funeral for the cat. They said, no, we don't do this here. So the last church was a Baptist church. They went there, talk about it. They say, "Oh no, no we don't bury cats. Those are, they, they have, they have no soul." So the man said, "Oh, the owner of the cat left this will that any church that will bury this cat, this is their mom, two million dollars for the cat." He said, "But why you didn't tell me the cat was Baptist?" <laughs> let, let, let's bring on our second caller here, no, no. Otavius Mali, Otavius Jones Mali. Otavius, your life. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Reverend Freeman. My thank question you. is that uh, you are currently speaking to the world, and so many of us tend to focus on these things and believing what is being said. For instance, when the panelists are on this forum, they give references, they give authentic references so that we make a follow up to make sure what they're telling us on the platform are true. So now you are telling us some very important things about business, especially you listed so many things about new businesses that Christian are supposed to be involved in. But my problem now, now is that there is no scriptural backing for me to accept and believe this thing. So that's my first question. And that is troubling. And secondly, <laughs> you talk about money coming into the church when you talk about customer skills, 
something you have introduced in the church. It has nothing to do with salvation. And uh, the, ter the terminology, the customer skills, belong to the corporate world. Now you have all A to factor A into your church to see how best probably you can uh, move on with public relations and other things. That's good. But that war, it, it has a business conversation into it. So how do you compromise that? Uh, getting it from the corporate world. This is where I come from. Because it has nothing to do with salvation. It has nothing to do with telling me how I will go to heaven. It has something to do mm -hmm. with keeping me in the church. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your questions. Let me address your questions. The first question you talked about was some Bible verses that I, I would recommend that you, you, you start reading uh, the book of Proverbs because the book of Proverbs has a lot of principles in them. Let me give you one of the references today on honesty in business. Uh, Brother Dennis had cited that. And uh, I want you to just some references, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 1, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 121. But I want you personally to start a study in the book of Proverbs to see the principles. Now, your second question has to do with uh, the, 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 church, the church, the church, that the mission of the church is just salvation that the only topic that we teach in the church is salvation no yes salvation is, is an important topic but it's important my brother for you to understand we just don't teach salvation jesus said i have come that you may have life and life more abundant abundant living is not just salvation john chapter 10 10 so christian living it's not, I, I, he is, it's so interesting that he creates this dichotomy of this is what the people do in the circular world. They can do good customer service in the secular world, but when it comes to the church, we shouldn't do no ushers at the door should greet people. The same way how when you go into a store, people greet people. So greeting in a business and coming to the church where people making you welcome, there's not this strict dichotomy. What am I trying to say? I'm saying that salvation is not the only topic in the church. Right. You have to teach people holistic, holistic Christian living is not just salvation. Holistic Christian living is teaching people leadership skills, teaching people business skills, teaching people how to do business. So by the fact that uh, uh, as a pastor, I'm talking to you about business. It doesn't mean, my dear brother, that I'm, I'm not going to talk to you about salvation. But we have different subjects that the Bible address. So today, we are doing excellent, exceptional customer service. But I remember Hello Pastor had done a show on heaven and earth. That's the time we're talking to you about salvation. So I just want him to understand that if he's following us, I'm not always going to be talking about salvation. Yeah, because I will be talking about different different topics, but it doesn't mean that he can restrict Christian living to one topic. Christian living right. is not just one topic. Right. We 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 can even teach people how to eat. Exactly. The Bible condemns gluttony. You can exactly. Uh, so I don't want you to think that it, we will restrict this. Yeah. yeah. Ma Masa is not happy with my example. <laughs> up on the Baptist cat, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the Baptist okay. said, "You don't. If you have told me the cow of Baptist, we don't have. We don't have this long talk." <laughs> okay. But Brother Dennis you know, apologizes for you to call it the cat of Baptist cat. We will call the cat a cat. So I'm sorry, Massa. The, the cat is not Baptist. All yes. Right. Pastor, thank you so much for yes the excellent customer service tonight. Yes. Your closing. My closing, Brother Dennis, I want to close quickly with some practical examples. So, for example, the Chick fil A people, they, own, they say they're going to honor Christ, Brother Dennis. The Chick fil A people say they honor Christ by not opening the store on, on, on Sunday. When you go to the Marriott, they have a Bible. 
In fact, the married people, brother Dennis, they started, they stopped. You cannot order a pornography pay-per-view. That's the way they want to honor Christ. That's a business thing. This is why you can't you can order pornography in their, their, their hotel rooms. They have Bibles in their hotel room. Check for Lacey, we will close our stores on Sunday and allow people to go to church. George Foreman said that in order for me to live my Christian life, I will do no promotion for alcohol. The windy people say we have to treat the people who work for us with respect. These are just different examples. Of, of customer service practices that people say, okay, I read the Bible, but how do I live out my Christian life? It's important for you to understand customer service is just Christian living when you're doing business. Yeah. We cannot uh, try to truncate Christian living. Mm -hmm. and, and what Jesus said, you know, we, you, you treat people, you know, be your brother's keeper, treat people the way you want to be treated. Yes. That's customer service. Yeah, but brother Dennis, even the parable that Jesus tells, Jesus said, when the man, brother Dennis, uh, uh, was robbed on the on the Jericho road, they, they took him to the innkeeper, and the innkeeper exhibited excellent customer service, right? Yeah. He helped. That was the in that brother Dennis in that particular passage. The in is a business. The innkeeper was running a what, and oh, he okay. helped the man. So. Jesus did talk about good customer service. It's just that you have the eyes. You have to have the eyes to see it in the text. But some people, brother, they just only like for us to talk about salvation. They don't want us to talk about everything. The best book on business ever written is the Bible. There are uncountable biblical and ethical principles that govern our behavior in the contemporary business environment. In fact, more than half of Jesus' parable has something to do with business. Uh, I rest. I rest my case, brother Hamilton. I thank you for the feedback. I, I, I like the fact that today, hello, pastor. People are really engaging with us, brother Dennis. We are making an impact. God yeah. bless you all. God bless you. I don't. And God know bless you focus on Liberia, but God also bless Liberia. Yeah, and and, and focus on Liberia. The way we give excellent customer service is we we don't want to alienate anyone. That's why we cover all topics. And we uh, we are not biased. We want to be very fair so that we can service all political parties, all people of faith. So if you have any and you want to be part of it, please feel free to contact us. You have a show or you want us to interview or do anything, contact us. We don't discriminate. Although we have values, we have principles. There are certain things that we would not do that go against our core. Thank you for watching. I also want to tomorrow, tomorrow at 8 p.m., we'll have a debate right here, or Eula debate. So Eula, Eula is going to uh, election next month. I think the 15th to the 17th going to be elections. So on Monday, we're going to have the vice presidential debate. That's Monday at 8 p.m. I'll be here with my boy, Anthony Sia, the political bulldog. And we're going to be moderating a debate between the two vice presidential candidates. That's uh, Emmanuel Nambe and Maneva Grant. You don't want to miss it. Pastor, thank you very much. And want to appreciate our sister in the background. She doesn't like for us to call her name. But sister, we love you. We appreciate the work you are doing in the background. Excellent thank customer so service much. as well. Thank you so much. And we want to thank our viewers, even those who will watch later. Always focus on Liberia, where we educate, we elevate, and promote all things Liberia. If, until then, we close with our song that says, we are all Liberians. Have a good night, and God bless you. Yeah. We are Liberians.